Welcome back to tutorial on the uh, BJTs and uh, in this tutorial video we are gonna basically uh, well do a comparative study of all the uh, BJT operating modes okay so uh, this page as you can see okay let's just pull the page down a bit that's better so this page as you can see we're just gonna well divide it into the uh, you know four parts okay so let's just do it over here okay so there you go now that we've divided the page into three, I mean uh, four parts over here. So on the extreme left, we have the uh, various physical parameters of the uh, BJT concerned. And now we have all the three different operational modes of the BJT lined up on our right. Okay. So let's just take point number one. So as you can see over here, we're just going to talk about the input resistance of the various BJT uh, operating modes concerned. So you can see here in terms of the input resistance of the BJT, I mean the operating modes of the BJT, the common base and the common emitter modes, that the CB and the CE modes, well they have quite low amounts of input resistance. For the CB mode it's approximately equals to well uh, about a hundred ohms and in case of the common emitter mode it's about well approximately 750 ohms. Well, in the case of the common collector mode, it's exceptionally high. It's about, well, 750Ks, which is about, well, uh, let's see, which is about, um, well, 1,000 times larger than that of the uh, input resistance encountered in that case of the uh, common emitter mode, okay? So now, that's the uh, difference in terms of the input resistance concerned. Okay, so now, uh, going to point number two, which represents the output resistance of the uh, various uh, BJT operating modes. Now if you just take a look at the uh, output resistance parameters for each of the operating modes, we're basically going to get this sort of a parameter, I mean uh, this sort of a, you know, data for um, this particular parameter that uh, represents the output resistance of the various modes. And it says that, well, uh, for the uh, common base mode, the output resistance is quite high. It's about, well, well, it's overwhelmingly high. It's about, let's say, 450 K. Okay, and now for the common emitter mode, it's slightly uh, less than the uh, common base mode, but it's about uh, 10 times less. It's uh, about 45 Ks, while in the case of the common collector mode, it's, well, very, very low indeed. It's about, well, 50 ohms only. So now, this particular data, well, uh, gives us an idea that for the common base and the common emitter modes, we could obtain some sort of a voltage gain okay between the input and the output signals concerned but in the common collector mode well this is not the case okay so moving on to point number three now this point represents the voltage gain that we are supposed to obtain for uh, all the uh, three operating modes so we can see over here taking a good look that well for the uh, common base mode we we could get possibly a voltage gain of about well 150 which means that the output voltage would be well 150 times uh, you know, larger than that of the input signal, okay? I mean, if you ever apply an input signal into the BJT, which we all know that it, it does provide some amount of amplification to any sort of uh, given input signal as such. So if you have an input signal, the and uh, if the BJT will is configured in the common base mode of operation, then it would provide uh, an output signal which is about, well, 150 times larger than that of the input signal that you've provided to the uh, circuit concerned. And now if this is the case with the uh, common emitter mode then we, you'll be getting probably well 500 times larger uh, the output signal uh, compared to the magnitude that you apply at the input. So you can see that uh, over here that the CE mode offers well quite a high amount of voltage amplification. Okay so uh, now moving on to the common collector mode over here we can see that well this uh, does provide well a very very poor amount of voltage gain. So you can see that it's less than even one. So it's probably due to the fact that, well, its output uh, resistance is quite low compared to its input resistance. Okay, so we can see that over here that the CE mode is quite, I mean, the best suited for, uh, you know, applications where, you know, voltage amplification uh, or voltage gain is a big factor. Okay, so now just moving on to point number four. Now here we have the uh, current gain for the various BJT modes and now we can see over here that well the first column that represents the common base mode well it has well quite uh, a less amount of current gain it, it has well the current gain over here is well less than one okay and that's quite low 
despite the fact that it ha it it could I mean uh, it uh, could provide a very high amount of voltage gain, but it cannot provide current gain as we can see over here. Well, I'll come to the cause later on, but well, as the uh, data shows over here, it's quite less. But in the case of the uh, common emitter mode over here, as you can see, well, the current gain is quite high. Well, the uh, amount to which, I mean, uh, through which it could, well, basically vary, uh, well, that could depend upon the, uh, um, I mean, uh, the particular type of uh, the BJT manufactured, and, well, it could be as high as, well, uh, 100 to, well, about 300 times, maybe something like that. But it's not quite uh, specific over here, and, uh, well, it, it's just, well, uh, quite specific in the case of each type of BJT concerned. Well, other than that, uh, if we just go on to the common collector mode over here, well, this mode provides, well, appreciable amount of current gain, maybe 50 times, 200 times, something like that. Okay, so now that the uh, we have discussed the current gain over here, we could possibly move on to point number five. Now here we can see that in the case of uh, point number five, we have the current multiplication factor. So in case of the CB mode, that's the common base mode, the current multiplication factor is represented with the symbol of alpha. And now the value of alpha is, well, approximately, well, 0.99, okay? So that's why we can say that, well, the current, I mean, the collector current is almost equal to that of the emitter current in case of the common base mode of operation of the BJT. Okay, so now that said, uh, if we just move on to that of the uh, common emitter mode, we can see, well, the current multiplication factor over here is represented with the symbol of beta, as you can see over here. All right, so beta, on the other hand, is represented, uh, or rather, as a function of that of alpha, where uh, the beta is equal to, well, alpha divided by one minus that of alpha. Now, if we just calculate beta using, uh, well, this particular value of alpha over here, so for a, cor I mean, for a, a, you know, value of alpha equals to about, well, 0.99, we can get a beta of about, well, 99. We, so we can see that it's a big leap from that of the common base mode. So you can see that the current amplification or rather multiplication in the case of the common emitter mode is quite high. That is uh, almost about, well, 99 times, or we can say, well, it's almost about, well, 100 times. So in some uh, type of BJTs, which are, well, uh, designed specifically to provide, well, very high current gains, this value could be as large as, well, 300 times almost. So that's the uh, basically the reason over here that the current gain in the CE mode is quite high, uh, while in the case of that of the uh, common base mode, on the other hand, it's, well, less than one. So you can see right from over here. On the other hand, if you just move on to the common collector mode, so we can see over here that the current multiplication factor is represented with the symbol of gamma, as you can see. Now gamma is expressed as a function of beta and hence as that of alpha also, where we can see that gamma is equal to, well, beta plus one, and that's, that, that's obviously, well, can be rep represented as, well, one divided by one minus that of alpha. So if we just put the uh, value of beta concerned for uh, this value of alpha for about, well, 0.99, then we can get a corresponding value of gamma as equals to, well, 100. So you can see that the current gain is appreciable in the case of the common collector mode, and it, well, does provide some sort of, I mean, I mean some good amount of current amplification as such. Okay, so now just moving on to point number six. Okay, so here we're basically gonna talk about the leakage current that's gonna flow through the different BJT modes. Okay, so for the common base mode as concerned, the, uh, you know, the leakage current that should flow through the reverse biased collector junction is, well, represented with the symbol of ICBO. Now this particular, uh, you know, representation, well, uh, actually means that we're basically measuring the amount of, uh, well, leakage current when we just open the base terminal. So as you can see that in this particular mode, the base terminal is grounded. So if we just go forward and move uh, the base terminal from the ground connection, the collector junction would still be reverse biased, okay? And now in case of a reverse biased collector junction, this would be the amount of uh, leakage current that would possibly be flowing in the case of the common base mode of operation of the BJT. Now coming back to the uh, common emitter uh, mode of operation of this uh, device, 
we can see that well the leakage current over here is represented with the symbol of ICEO as you can see over here now here ICEO could be represented as a uh, well a function of that of ICBO uh, with the help of this expression over here it is given as well ICEO equals to ICBO divided by 1 minus that of alpha okay so now if we know the uh, value of alpha for a particular uh, given BJT for its uh, well its common mode I mean common base mode of operation sorry so we can well calculate the amount of uh, ICEO that we're which we are well supposed to get for its uh, well representation in the common emitter mode as well okay and finally uh, to the, in the case of the common collector mode the only leakage current that's well is uh, of a significant uh, I mean of a some sort of you know significance is uh, obviously taken as the uh, ICBO that's the only collector I mean uh, only the uh, leakage current expression that appears uh, in its output equation and that's exactly what I was trying to mean over here that you'll obviously find that uh, all these uh, leakage current expressions that we basically deal with over here they all of them are gonna I mean appear in uh, all of the uh, output expressions uh, I mean sorry there the output current equations for all the BJT operational modes so we'll be going back to uh, I mean going to that point shortly afterwards okay so then let us, let's, let's move on to the uh, point number seven over here now there you go now you have the uh, current equation I mean the output current equations for all the uh, modes of BJT operations concerned so you can see that for the common base mode it's just uh, the collector current that is obviously treated as the output current so it's obviously a fraction of the uh, total amount of emitter current coming uh, into the collector section plus that of the uh, you know the leakage current present in the reverse bias collector junction so it's just represented as well IC equals to alpha IE plus that of ICBO okay now in the case of the common emitter mode over here you can see that well the current and the input is obviously the uh, base current while the output current is the collector current once again so here the collector current is well multiplied uh, nearly quite higher number of times than compared to the uh, common base mode so we have here the base current multiplied uh, with the multi current multiplication factor that is beta over here plus that of the uh, leakage current present in I mean leakage current component will basically present in the reverse biased uh, collector junction as such so we can just represent it this way that IC equals to well beta IB plus that of ICEO okay and now if you just finally move on to the common collector mode as such we can just uh, represent the uh, output current which is of course the emitter current since the emitter terminal is treated as the output terminal in the case of the common collector mode so we can just write down something like this that IE equals to well gamma times that of IB plus that of ICBO where ICBO represents the uh, leakage current in the uh, reverse biased collector junction for the common collector mode of operation okay now in point number eight we got the temperature stability issue over here now this particular temperature stability uh, is quite a very big issue for the BJTs so it's quite important to discuss that over here okay so for the common base mode we can see that well it does have some good points at least so it has a good temperature stability when it comes to this particular parameter on the other hand the uh, common emitter and the common collector modes in both of them well the temperature stability is well uh, not good uh, inbuilt okay it, it's it's not uh, well uh, by instinct or rather uh, naturally uh, the temperature stability is well not up to the mark but it can be well improved with external biasing methods if we would just well bias uh, or rather keep the uh, junctions concerned well biased with the uh, required amount of voltage levels then well the temperature stability could be improved as such so here in both the case of the common emitter and the common collector modes the stability is improved with external biasing aids okay so now just uh, moving on to the last point over here where we're basically going to discuss about the applications and any discussion without the applications well it's obviously quite incomplete okay so picking up application as such so the common ma uh, I mean common base mode of uh, the BJT is well perfectly suited for high frequency based applications for example in case of I, I mean you can obviously well quite often find uh, a 
common base uh, mode stage used in case of high frequency oscillators as such okay now the CE mode uh, or the common emitter mode is quite suited for audio frequency range of applications so you can well uh, find you know audio amplifiers uh, you know constructed with common uh, emitter mode of uh, the BJT as such okay so now moving on to the common collector mode its main application is in the case of impedance matching where you can well basically find it being used in case uh, I mean in, in uh, various types of buffer networks as such and now uh, the buffer networks basically what they do is that they just match well a uh, high impedance load with that of a low impedance I mean sorry a high impedance uh, source with that of a low impedance load that's exactly what the uh, common collector mode is good at doing okay so that basically discussed over here we finally wrap up a discussion today from this particular tutorial hope you've understood all the points discussed in this uh, video and this has been quite enjoyable I hope so it's just gonna be a short goodbye for now from this tutorial video and don't forget to watch us next in the forthcoming videos as well so it's gonna be a short goodbye and thanks for watching